to my bag? Well, my bag is more like an episode of Hoarders than a what's in my bag segment because I've got a lot of random stuff in here. First off, I use this Mind Shift. I like it because it's waterproof, but it's light. It's not too bulky. Let's see here. I've got the 15 to 30 that I'm using for landscapes this time. This isn't a lens that I typically carry around. It's massive, but it's a really good lens and I knew we'd see a lot of beautiful landscapes, so I wanted to bring this along. I've got the filter that goes with that, which is flat glass. It makes me incredibly nervous. I have a toothbrush. That's important. I have a packable down coat that I travel with every single time because it doubles as a pillow and it keeps you warm on planes. Anthony Bourdain does that too, so I guess that means I'm pretty cool. Let's see. Then I have this little side compartment for easy access, and I've got the Nikon 70-200, to which is a pretty versatile lens, something I bring with me if I think I'll be taking portraits. I've got an extra battery, crucial, and some more filters for my other lenses that I keep in here. And then I usually just sling my camera over my shoulder with a versatile lens. I've got the 24 to 105 here, the Sigma, and then this is just something I like to keep on my body all the time, not really in my bag, but there's always enough room to stuff it in there if I want to. That's pretty much it. We're road tripping up the California coast with the one box filming another season of Wanderlust, and we have a seven hour road trip, so I thought I'd go through what's in my bag. First, my bag that I picked is the uh, Manfrotto Be Free backpack. I, we have all the backpacks, like definitely more than a dozen of them, and just the one I like the most. It's not super ugly, and it seems really functional, and mostly it's like lightweight. And then on the outside here, I got the Manfrotto Be Free tripod. Uh, it fits pretty perfectly in there, and it's been super reliable. We actually bought a second one, because Chelsea and I wanted a separate one, so we wouldn't have to fight over them, and we couldn't find another travel tripod that we liked at all. So that one works really good. This is the Peak Design Capture. It just clips your camera onto a backpack strap, and I really prefer this over using a separate strap if I have to carry my backpack anyway. So if I don't need to carry extra lenses, then I'll just use a regular shoulder strap. But you can see I use this a lot because it's all <laughs> marked up and banged up, but it works really well. You just lock it in with this uh, red button, push that, pull it out, and um, the little clip is small and lightweight and works on my Manfrotto Beefy backpack too. Um, so that all works pretty well. My only complaint is it doesn't have a thumb screw. I have to actually use a coin or a tool and I never have either one of those. My main camera that I've been using on this trip is the Olympus EM1 Mark II. It's a great little camera and it has this awesome high res mode which will make 80 megapixel raw files and I shot it up against my 5DSR and it beat it. So I'm like, okay, landscapes, I'm gonna bring that. And I've been really happy with it. Tilt tilting screen makes all the difference and it shoots great 4K video too. So when I'm, I can quickly grab, grab clips when I want to. The lens I have on here is the Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8, a Canon mount, and I have it attached using a Metabones speed booster. This is the XL speed booster, so it's a 0.64 crop. And this is an 18 to 35. Anyway, it ends up being about like a full frame 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. When you talk about the, the final results you get, actually it's a little faster, it's more like f2.2. It's an incredibly fast, so it's, it makes this a fantastic low light camera. And because the camera has stabilization, the lens itself becomes stabilized, which is a big weakness using that on DSLRs. And because it's a mirrorless camera, it never misses focusing. That was always a challenge with this lens on DSLR, so, and that combination has just been great, but you can see it's not big and heavy. So, you know, the idea that the mirrorless camera is gonna be small doesn't really work with this combination, but the results are outstanding. Like I said, better than 5DSR, probably better than medium format, though I haven't compared them. Let's open up my bag. Oh, on the outside here, what do I got in here? I got my uh, little Bose noise-canceling headphones, the in-ear kind for the long trip out. Okay, lenses. This is the Olympus 300 millimeter f4, so it's like a 600 millimeter f8 in full frame terms. And it's fairly small, the quality has been great, it has image stabilization. 
and we've been seeing lots of wildlife, so it's not a big deal to carry this around and throw it on. And I want to get some wildlife shots. And for in between, I have the Sigma 50 to 100 f1.8, another really high quality APS-C lens, and I have to use the speed booster on this. Um, that combination has been working great. Uh, it will blur the background better than any Micro Four Thirds lens could. It's also, I find that it's sharper and faster, so better in the light. And again, the major weaknesses of this are lack of stabilization, poor focusing. Those are completely solved in the mirrorless world just because of the difference, uh, the sensor stabilization and the mirrorless architecture. Of course, you know, I'm traveling with a drone and the best travel drone drone out there is the Mavic Pro, at least when it's not flaking out, but it's been totally reliable on me this trip. Got my little face on there. Folds up super small, so it's not a big deal. Sometimes you're just out and about and the opportunity to drone arises and it's nice that it's not like a phantom where carrying it around becomes a big deal. I don't know why that got turned on. Okay. I also have uh, a backup camera, a uh, GH5. We're doing a lot of filming, so I'm helping out and I get B-roll and stuff sometimes, so sometimes I'll grab the GH5, so we have 60 frames per second. And on this, just as a versatile lens, I have the Olympus 14 to 40. Uh, I have Panasonic zooms too, and they work better, but Justin is filming and he had grabbed all of those. Oh, one more lens, I have to, well, Justin's filming with it now, so I guess you can see it. It's the Olympus 7 to 14. I had to go super wide and I couldn't find a decent lens that I wanted to adapt, so in that case, the native Micro Four Thirds lens turned out to be the best choice. Overall, I've been super happy with the combination. I think the results have been great. A couple more things. I got iPhone 7 Plus. Waze is getting me to In-N-Out Burger right now. I know people freaked out that I wasn't on Android anymore, but iPhone 7 Plus has two lenses that are different focal lengths. So the ability to zoom into like 50 millimeter equivalent, I just, I love that. And I do a lot of stills and video with this because it's convenient, it's fast, nobody gets bothered by it. It's not intimidating for things like street photography. I also love this for just the mobile workflow. I've been copying pictures from my SD card into my phone using it. And we'll talk about that more in another video.